Software training and employee adoption is one of the most common and most important aspects of digital transformation and ERP implementation projects. But most organizations tend to get this critical work stream wrong. Worse yet, many of them overlook this work stream and don't invest enough time or money in it. But what exactly is software training and adoption and how do we make the most of it? That's what I want to talk about here today. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients throughout the world reach their third stage of digital transformation success. And one of the biggest things that we focus on as an organization in helping clients through their digital transformation journeys is the organizational change management work stream. And one of the sub work streams or sub activities within change management is the overall training and adoption aspect of software deployments. But when we're working with clients, they seem to intuitively not understand what it takes or what it means to do training and adoption right and to focus the right amount of time and energy and resources on this critical work stream. To make matters worse, most software vendors and system integrators also don't handle this project work stream very well either. So what I want to do today is talk about what software training and adoption is, what it should look like, and what some of the major considerations should be as you define your training and adoption strategy for your digital transformation. Now, one of the themes that I'll discuss throughout today's video is the fact that you're planning for training and defining your training strategy and really understanding what your training needs are is something that should start early in your project. It's something that you should start in the planning phases of your project. And this is a critical point that I'm going to come back to throughout this video. But that's one thing I'll start off by saying is that the implementation planning process should be heavily focused on your change strategy and your training and adoption strategies. Now, for more best practices around change management in general, including training and adoption strategies that will help with your digital transformation, I encourage you to download our Guide to Organizational Change Management. This is a report that outlines some of the best practices and lessons and tips and strategies that we've seen work best for organizations in their change management efforts. So you can download or read that report by scanning the QR code on the screen in front of you, or I've included links to the white paper below, as well as other resources that I think will help you from a change and an overall digital strategy perspective. So be sure to check out those links in the description field below. One of the most common phenomena with software deployments is this assumption or this belief that software vendors must have robust training materials that we can use to deploy our training. And while this is true to some degree, it's very misleading to assume that the out of the box or off the shelf training materials that a software vendor might have is going to enable the training adoption that you need for your organization. For example, the generic training materials that vendors provide might be a good useful starting point, but they aren't tailored to your specific industry. They're not tailored to your specific processes. They're not tailored to your specific nuances and the way you've configured or customized the software. So that right there would suggest that they're not going to be ideal, nor are they going to be super useful for your training and adoption strategies. And to further complicate matters, most organizations treat their ERP or digital transformation initiatives as a business transformation that involves not just technology, but also changes to business processes, ways of doing business, organizational roles and responsibilities, and other aspects of a business transformation but yet software vendor training materials are very focused on transactions. How do you do transactions within a software? So when you add up all these considerations, it becomes clear that having tailored training materials that fit your specific needs, your specific business processes, your specific configurations of the technology, your specific ways of doing business and all that stuff is going to be critical to enabling training and adoption that you need from your employees. So as you're developing your training needs assessment and defining a training strategy for your organization, it's really important that you factor in enough time, resources, and focus to allow your team to create customized and tailored training materials that truly speak to who you are as an organization and how it is your future state looks going forward. Another critical thing to think about and consider as you develop your training strategy is the fact that training should go well beyond classroom training. Too often organizations think that a few weeks or even a few days before a go live, we're gonna sit people down in a classroom and we're gonna teach them how to use the new software. If this is the focus or the centerpiece of your training strategy, I can almost assure you that this is a recipe for a disaster and it's not going to be enough for your organization. 
And the reason for that is because this is a big change effort. And if you wait until training to convey key process changes, role and responsibility changes, and technology changes all at the same time, that's going to be too much for your organization to consume in too little of a time. One thing I like to mention to our clients is that employees are going to freak out when they find out that their spreadsheets are going to go away or that their business processes are going to change or that their jobs have materially changed. They are going to have moments of panic. They're going to resist change and there is a lot that you're going to have to work through. And the last place you want to be doing that is in a classroom based setting. So if you're relying on classroom training to spring a bunch of changes and surprise your employees on how to do business going forward, you've waited far too long. Now, the good news is there's a lot of other things you can do to augment classroom based training with other tactics and strategies that will make your edges your training even more successful and effective. For example, there are highly effective change strategies like change impact assessments that allow you to identify how people's jobs are changing so that you can be very targeted and how you convey and communicate changes to people's jobs. There's also user acceptance testing, which is not necessarily a change management activity per se, but it's something that can be helpful in continuing to train in an iterative process some of your key stakeholders and business users in the transformation. And then there's a host of other communication and adoption tools that you can use to ensure that you're conveying the changes necessary to the organization without waiting for that classroom-based training to happen later. And one way to think about this is your classroom-based training should be somewhat of a formality. People have already worked through all the freak out moments They've already digested the way their processes and jobs are going to change. Now we're focused on helping them understand and solidify their understanding of how technology will help them do their jobs. Now I haven't dove into all of the different change strategies and tactics that you can deploy to augment your training materials, but I encourage you to check out this playlist right here, which contains a number of change management videos that I've compiled over the years that give you more of a deep dive into some of the change management strategies and tactics that can be used to augment your classroom training materials. The next thing to be mindful of is to target your training and make sure that you're targeting and training people on the things that they need to know and that you're targeting and training them on the things that they need to know at the right time. In other words, you don't want to take a shotgun based approach to training people on how to use all different components of a system when only perhaps 10 or 20% of that functionality is something that they will actually use. So this is where that training needs assessment becomes so important, where we want to define what it is that each of the major work groups and departments and business locations within an organization need to be able to do their jobs well. And not only that, we also want to look at when do people need to know how to do different things. If we're going to go live at the beginning of a fiscal year, for example, then it probably doesn't make sense to train employees on how to conduct the period end, year end close process when it's going to be 11 or 12 months until they are actually going to do that process, in which case you might defer that training until later post implementation. But for critical business processes that employees need to understand on day one of go live, you absolutely want to make sure that you prioritize that training and make sure that people are very solid in their understanding of those processes and technologies. And this is even more true, by the way, for critical business functionality that would be a showstopper if your people couldn't do their jobs adequately or correctly. And the last thing I'll mention about targeting your training efforts are to watch out for this dynamic that we see oftentimes in digital transformations where the training activities become somewhat of a moving target. You look at a project that gets delayed, for example, and you find that the design has been delayed, the build has been delayed, the testing has been delayed, and the change or the training team oftentimes is working with a moving target. They don't have a solid working system that they can train people on yet, or at least start to build the training materials on. And this is a problem that ends up pushing a project out. And the other problem here is that organizations oftentimes don't build in enough buffer in some of these major milestones of a project to ensure that the training team has enough time to create customized training materials and that they're targeting the training the way they need to. So you just want to make sure that you have the right scope and the right timing for your training as part of your overall training strategy. An overwhelming majority of the time that we see software vendors or system integrators propose a training approach, they are suggesting a train the trainer approach. In fact, I can't recall the last time I saw a vendor or system integrator suggest something other than a train the trainer approach. And just to give you a real quick definition of what train the trainer means is it essentially means that the software vendor or the consultants you're working with will train a core group of people within your organization on how to conduct certain business processes using vanilla software. 
And then those people will then be responsible for going out and training the masses of employees. On one hand, this is a great idea because it's getting your business stakeholders involved. It's giving you ownership of the training materials and the training program. But on the other hand, it's glossing over a very important, very difficult work stream. And that's because just because someone might be good at understanding a business process or they might know the system better than anyone doesn't necessarily mean that they themselves are going to be the best people to go out and train people. The other phenomena that we commonly see is the trainers that have been trained on the software now don't have time to create tailored training materials. They don't have time to conduct training effectively because they themselves get caught up in so many other project activities. They might be involved in user acceptance testing. They might be involved in requirements definition and designing and building the software, whatever the case may be. And so oftentimes training becomes an afterthought and they don't have time to do the training effectively. So one thing that we've seen work is to balance out training with business support. And in some cases, having a professional trainer that could be a third party helping facilitate the training, but using the business knowledge that the business owners have and co-facilitating those training sessions with those business owners. It gives a certain amount of credibility because now you've got someone internally to the organization that's conducting the training, but it also gives those internal people more support and more scale than they might have if they were responsible for conducting the training on their own. One of the later milestones that's very important to training and adoption is to measure the readiness of employees to conduct and perform their business processes using the technology that are going to be rolled out as part of your transformation. Too often organizations assume that just because people went through the training or just because you checked off training off your, your Gantt chart or your project plan, you must be ready and employees must be ready for the big go live date. But the reality is, is some training sticks better than others, some is done better than others. And you need to measure how ready the organization is and start to measure where refresher training might need to happen, or at the very least identify where some of the major organizational and training risks might remain as you approach go live. And it may very well be that there's certain fundamental training that needs to happen or happen again as part of ensuring that you are ready for go live. And there might be other business processes or other capabilities that are lower priority right now that you might be able to push out till after post go live. But regardless, you wanna have a formalized and structured way of measuring employee readiness so that you know how effective your training has been and where you might need to conduct refresher training. Now, speaking of refresher training, this is something that's very common. No matter how well you do your training, there's going to be follow-up training you need to do after the fact, either before go live or post go live. It's very common after you go live to find that one of the root causes for lack of business value or suboptimal business processes is because people just aren't using the technology right or they're not executing business processes the way they should because it's new to them, in which case you might have a series of refresher training courses to really help people feel more confident and to get more comfortable with the technology that they're now using for the first time. So it's important to not just look at your training program as a pre go live activity, but one that continues even beyond go live, especially if you're in a multi-phase environment. If you're rolling out technologies and different capabilities in multiple phases throughout the organization, this is even more true. But even in a big bang, single go live situation, it's very likely that you're going to want to have post go live refresher training to ensure that you're continuing to optimize the business value you're getting out of your digital transformation investments. So these are just a few of the things to think about as you develop your training strategy and you start to plan how you're going to address this critical training and adoption work stream of your digital transformation. As I mentioned at the start of the video, it's something that you should begin at the planning phase of your project. So if you've selected the software and you're getting ready to start deploying software, that would be the ideal time to start developing your training plan and really have a good understanding of what those training strategies and activities are going to be so that you can have a realistic plan that accounts for those critical work streams. Too often organizations create a work plan with their software vendor and they sort of gloss over the whole training and adoption piece to focus on building technology. And what you need to do is really insert some of those key activities, resource requirements, and budgets into the overall plan or the overall program to ensure that you've adequately addressed the training and adoption piece. So I hope this has provided you some helpful information as you develop your change in training and adoption strategy. And for more best practices and lessons around that, I encourage you to read our Guide to Organizational Change Management, 
which is a white paper you can read by scanning the QR code on the screen in front of you, or you can read it by going to the links in the description field below. I've included a link to that paper as well as other resources that I think will help you from a change management and digital strategy perspective. So I encourage you to check out those resources. So I hope you found this information useful and hope you have a great day. All right, so now tailored training materials, take two. <laughs> the first thing to be aware of when defining your training just bleep, are gonna be very, let me say that again, that was the worst run on sentence ever said on video in the history of mankind. It probably doesn't make a lot of sense to train people how to conduct the year-end period and perform blah, blah. Wow. Now I know I haven't dived into all the different I was just thinking that it's funny. It has a Dover dive. Yeah. I don't speak English good.